Hip-hop's ever-changing evolutions has seen a variety of acts who were bold enough to step onto the scene throughout the decades. Some were able to propel their careers into legendary status, while others seem to be here one day and gone the next. But for Iggy Azalea's musical endeavors, it all seems to be a bit more complex. Coming in hot from across the pond, Amethyst, or Iggy, was determined to make her stage pseudonym a household name, but wasn't quite prepared for how that goal would have backfired, dropping several mixtapes and EPs before releasing her biggest body of work to date, the new classic album, had achieved a milestone that had only ever been duplicated by The Beatles. Her song Fancy single-handedly gave Iggy the milestone she'd yearned for. But all of that shattered once appropriation, blackfishing, and the entire hip-hop community entered the chat. Unfortunately, the main contributor to her rise would also be the leading factor to her demise. Iggy Iggs had the radio waves jumping in 2014 when she hit us with back-to-back -back hits. But before the features with Ariana Grande and Britney Spears, Iggy didn't get to this level by being fed a silver spoon. Born and raised in Wales, Australia, Iggy, unlike other artists we know of, didn't come from a long line of musicians or anything of the sort. She, along with her siblings, lived in a home their father, a children's book author, had built from scratch using mud bricks surrounded by 12 acres of land. Similar to the thousands of yuppie white kids from the suburbs who've taken an extreme liking to the genre, Wales didn't serve to be any different. By the age of 14, Iggy had taken the first steps embarking on her musical journey by forming a girl group with two other girls from her neighborhood. As with any group nowadays, a rapper seems to be a requirement, and Iggy was eager to make that her position, striving to be the left eye, yes, of TLC, of her newly formed group, they were able to go triple times aluminum foil and would eventually split due to the other members treating the project like a dance squad and a middle school talent show. In her pursuit to become the next big thing, Iggy knew she wanted to get TF ASAP out of Australia and into the Americas. Eventually dropping out of school, she'd get on her grind, aiding her mother in cleaning hotel rooms and holiday houses in order to save up for her big escape that not even her family nor Iggy herself knew about. Upon arriving in the States in 2006, at just 16, she'd explore the Miami, Florida area before deciding that she didn't want to go back to her country. Her mom weeped, but knew this was something her daughter was destined to do and allowed her to stay flying in and out of Australia every couple of months in order to renew her visa. She bounced from Miami to Houston, Texas to Atlanta, Georgia, before meeting a rapper named Backbone. While out and about social networking, she'd meet someone from Interscope Records who would then encourage Iggy to move to Los Angeles during the summer of 2010. Interscope managed her for a brief period, and it would be during this time that Iggy had adopted her stage name by taking the name of her dog, Iggy, and the street she grew up on, Azalea Street. Iggy's rise steadily inclined after the release of her song that rhymes with Wussy, featuring YG, Joe Moses, Chevy Jones, and Problem. In 2011, she released a music video for My World that featured cameos by Tiny Lester, aka Debo from Friday, and later released her song two times. All three releases gained rapid popularity online, which would soon enough grab the attention of the self-titled King of Atlanta, heavy on the self-titled, himself, rapper T.I. Tip Harris. Her 2011 mixtape, Ignorant Art, had put Iggy Azalea on the map, and folks were really eager to figure out what this rapping Barbie, no Nikki, was all about. 2012 was an even bigger year for Iggs. She was featured on the cover of XXL as part of the magazine's top 10 freshmen list, alongside French Montana, Machine Gun Kelly, Roscoe Dash, and others, and made her US TV debut that same year appearing alongside T.I. and other artists on his Hustle Gang label at the BET Hip Hop Awards Cypher. That same month, she'd be given the chance to go on a mini tour with UK-based artist Rita Ora for Rita's Radioactive Tour. 
Iggy was making big moves, and in the following year of 2013, her already rising career only skyrocketed with her leading single, Work, from her most notable body of work to date, the new classic. The statuesque blonde butte had the industry on standby when the melodramatic track, consisting of witty yet easy lyricism about her struggles as an independent 16-year-old trying to make it big, had hip-hop's biggest icons interested. Joining rapper Nas on a European leg of his Life is Good tour, Iggy had gained the support of rap icons and would eventually dabble over into the mainstream side of things by taking the pop route. And would eventually... The Indian-inspired video for her second single, Bounce, premiered on Vivo and her sponsors were ongoing. In March of that same year, Iggy was chosen to perform at the Chime for Change benefit concert alongside Beyonce, yes, Giselle Knowles Carter, and somehow ended up being Bay's opening act on the Australian leg of her Mrs. Carter Show world tour. The third single, Change Your Life, premiered on BBC Radio One Extra in August of that same year. The song and music video features T.I., who'd also accompany her to her first appearance on BET's 106 and Park in October, introducing her to an audience that may not have been familiar with her before. This is where she'd perform Change Your Life alongside Tip, and despite not being signed to his Hustle Gang label, it'd be known that the two were heavily affiliated. Sort of like how practically the whole 90s East Coast rap scene was affiliated with Def Bro back when Suge Knight ran the label. Work and Change Your Life had evolved Iggy's career and were steadily climbing the charts. But the bop that kept on bopping, Fancy, featuring Charlie XCX, had been released on February 24th to Urban Radios in the UK as the album's fourth single and would single-handedly propel the incline of Iggy's rise to global superstardom. The March release's follow-up music video inspired by the Alicia Silverstone 1995 comedic film Clueless went on to become Iggy's most popular song and video to date. The video had been parodied all over social media and television, and the amount of share in Dion costumes we witnessed that year alone were endless. The tune itself was everywhere, and there was no getting away from it. From commercials and radio stations to grocery stores and retail shops, the song helped Iggy achieve her first number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as number one on the U.S. Dance Club and Hot Rap charts. With Fancy being the number one song in the country, this made Iggy the fourth female rapper in history to top the Hot 100 chart. She went on to feature in Ariana Grande's hit single, Problem, the collaboration peaking at number two on Billboard's Hot 100, which would be yet another historic accolade for Iggy, becoming just the second musical act in history to obtain both the number one and second spot for their debut appearance on the chart. The only artist to have ever achieved this being the Beatles. Her collab with Rita Ora on Black Widow garnered her three top 10 hits simultaneously on the Billboard charts. And it was evident by this point that Miss Iggy was on top of her A-game and had many fellow rap femcs looking up to her. But with all the love, praise, and fan worship, hate would unfortunately tag along. While Fancy was shining bright like a diamond, sitting at the top of the charts, Iggy was facing backlash from rap fans as well as the hip-hop community for not being hip-hop enough. Videos of her cut the mic segment at shows went viral, evidently being used as a receipt in order to prove that Iggy Azalea was one big facade. Igniting the beef that would later take a toll on Iggy's entire career, the other most notable rap Barbie, Nicki Minaj, had low-key, high-key, but really high-key, low-key thrown shots at Iggy while accepting her award for Best Female Hip Hop Artist at the 2014 BET Awards, uttering the famous quote, when you hear Nicki Minaj spit, Nicki Minaj wrote it. Without missing a beat, the media ate this right on up and solidified this as an attack on Iggy since it was recently revealed that she had used ghostwriters for her biggest hits. Although Nikki later clarified on Twitter that her speech wasn't meant as an attack, fans immediately began taking sides and somehow things escalated into a race debate 
with the barbs and opposing stands accusing Iggy of cultural appropriation, further boiling it down to Iggy reaching the pinnacle she had reached in her career due to her lack of melanin, if you get my drift. Other rappers like Azalea Banks, refrain the eye rolls, had chimed in on the whole appropriation discussion after it had been revealed that Iggy was nominated for a total of four Grammy Awards. During an interview with Hot 97, Azalea briefly spoke on her issue with Azalea, ultimately calling her out on her privilege, specifically the white kind. When they give these Grammys out, all it says to white kids is, oh yeah, you're great, you're amazing, you can do whatever you put your mind to. And it says to black kids, you don't have anything. Unsurprised by literally everyone, this wouldn't be the first time Azalea had taken shots at Iggy. About three years prior in 2011, Azalea attempted to start beef with Iggs when she called her out on her 2011 song, you know, the one that rhymes with wussy, implying that Iggy had stolen the concept from Azalea, to which Iggy indirectly clapped back and twoked that it wasn't about who did it first, but who's doing it better. In response to her Hot 97 interview, Iggy sounded off on Azalea in a series of tweets disclosing the fact that many black artists succeed in all genres of music and that the only reason Azalea hadn't been was due to her poor attitude. Whether you agree or disagree, this opened an even bigger can of worms. Certain fans played the role of Inspector Gadget and went rummaging through Iggy's old tweets and music catalog in hopes of discovering anything to get Iggy certified canceled. Semi-achieving their goal, an older song, Drugs, from her mixtape days had been resurfaced that contained the highly questionable lyrics. When the relay starts, I'm like a runaway slave master. Best believe Black Twitter lit her up like a Christmas tree. When Azalea got a hold of this, she quoted the lyrics and also mentioned how she had a problem with Iggy's lack of concern for the Black Lives Matter movement, which was a huge trending topic at the time, especially within the hip hop sector. The Twitter beef got so intense that rapper Q-Tip got involved, sharing a long history of the origins of hip hop. Even T.I. got involved, coming to Iggy's defense. Following her beef with Azalea Banks and Q-Tip, Snoop Dogg took it upon himself to post a rather than rude meme to his personal Instagram account, poking fun at her. When she caught wind of the post, she clapped back asking why he would post such a pic when ironically Snoop, allegedly, sends his bodyguards over to Iggs in hopes of snapping a few licks together whenever they're at the same event. In response to Iggy practically exposing him for his fan behavior, she uploaded a vid to his account addressing the situation, and Iggy herself as the C word rhymes with hunt. Just to post a follow-up video not too long after apologizing, after T.I. had put on his cape, chiming in yet again coming to Iggy's defense. At this point, hating on Iggy Azalea was the cool thing to do, and other rappers, opposing fandoms, and many others took note. Folks couldn't wait to hop on the bandwagon, including Eminem, whose song leaked, which included misogynistic rhetoric towards Iggy. When singer Tinashe dropped her song All Hands on Deck, the remix featuring Iggy was met with a swarm of backlash by Nashe fans, who went as far as to start a petition championing the erasure of Iggy's verse and involvement in any upcoming Tinashe projects. Things got so out of control, Tinashe herself said she had to stay off of social media for a few days in order for the chaos to die down. Supposedly, the vid for the remix version featuring Iggy was scheduled to drop in replace of the original song, but that plan never came to fruition. Tinashe went with the version without Iggy. Tinashe was also set to tour alongside Iggy for Iggy's upcoming tour, but ended up opening for Nicki Minaj on her Pink Print tour instead, insisting that the changes were due to timing and conflicting schedules. Janelle Monet once spoke to a radio host about fellow singer Jadena sampling Fancy for his song Classic Man, insisting that she steals from us, we steal right back. Erica Badu even took a swing at Iggy live on television at the 2015 Soul Train Awards, staging a phone call in which she tells a hypothetical Iggy, what you're doing is definitely not rap. 
Rapper Macklemore called out Iggy along with a few others in his song White Privilege 2 for exploiting black culture and when an Azalean brought this to her attention, Iggy brushed it off by claiming that Macklemore shouldn't have spent the last three years taking pics with her if he truly felt that way. I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting deja vu here. Once called out by rapper Talib Kweli, she went on a damage control tangent stating how she in fact did understand the message of the song. American Idol alumni Adam Lambert called Iggy a diva on an Aussie morning show. Singer Halsey, aka Miss Shampoo Gate, called her an effing idiot in 2017 and she sort of had a beef with Britney Spears as well as other resurfaced tweets pertaining to body shaming and homophobia. Another trait that, although undoubtedly smaller compared to the grander scheme of things, people pointed out the usage of Iggy's dialect and overall sound whenever she'd rap versus the way she spoke when not performing. A forced black scent, if you will. Further comparing her vocal style to the transgression of a menstrual act and verbal blackface. Later down the road in her career, we'd notice Iggy and former affiliate and mentor T.I. weren't interacting how they'd used to. Some seem to think the two gradually grew apart due to their busy schedules, but that couldn't have been further from the truth. While promoting Netflix's hip hop competition show Rhythm and Flow, T.I. called his decision to sign Iggy as a musical blunder and his biggest mistake. Iggy then came for his two inch dreads by stating that she had a whole list for him and deemed him a misogynist. He confided to radio host Ebro on Hot 97's Ebro in the Morning that the two had parted ways due to her resistance to understanding Q-Tip's history lesson. Going on a mush mouth tangent, T.I. basically had said that when she, being Iggy, found out that white people liked her, she didn't need black people to like her anymore. In short, she was switching up and had begun to act brand new. She had made moves he, he being Tip Harris, wasn't proud of, which placed his reputation on the line of fire. All according to T.I., that is. It all honestly sounds like once Iggy stopped kissing T.I.'s behind, that's when all hell broke loose, and he proceeded to act as though he were the one who distanced himself from her, when in reality, she was the one who was taking the world by storm. From what we've discussed earlier on in the video, he had no problem defending Iggy against all the allegations and accusations when she was in his good graces. On top of the accusations, a music video appeared out of nowhere, in the midst of all the drama, with a pre-TI affiliated Amethyst who had definitely been in her pop girl bag. Sounding like a bootleg Kesha parody from Wish, the military style video dazzled with cheesy ABC dance routines had people sounding off on the true depth of Iggy's appropriation using this newly discovered video clip to support their stances. But according to Iggy herself, apparently the song was created for a friend of hers who had been studying music production at the time. Besides, according to Iggy, pop was never really her thing. Hmm. Not allowing the naysayers to get in her way, Iggy persevered in her career, but reached a roadblock in 2018 due to her label. Switching gears, she released an EP, Surviving the Summer, under Island Records and debuted at 144 on the Billboard Hot 200. It contains the summer bop Cream, featuring Tyga, and the music video now stands at over 300 million views on YouTube. Further disagreements with her label had her wiping her hands with labels altogether, but wouldn't stop her from creating her own, named Bad Dreams, through a distribution deal. Her second album, In My Defense, was released in 2019, followed by another EP, Wicked Lips, that same year. Taking a hiatus, her most recent release, The End of an Era, dropped in 2021, and fans were worried that this was a hint at the end of her musical endeavors. If the appropriation accusations weren't bad enough, folks had begun to accuse her of blackfishing, not like they weren't accusing her before. But this time, it was pretty evident according to them. For her, I Am The Strip Club single off of her latest album, a shot of Iggy sporting a dark wig and makeup to enhance the pigment of her skin were noticeably altered. One person writing, make no mistake, celebrities do modern day blackface. It's just become socially accepted because it's so mainstream. <coughs> Iggy Azalea, Kim Kardashian, Ariana Grande, Kendall Jenner, to name a few. 
Iggy responded to the critics saying the foundation she was wearing in the video was the exact same shade she'd worn for years and that the room in the clips had been dimly lit with red lighting. Suddenly, I wear a black wig in a club scene and it's an issue. She then shared a picture of her foundation shade. Coming to her rescue, her then makeup artist who worked with her on the video backed up her claims, insisting that Iggy wore the same face makeup in every scene and that if anyone should know for sure, it would be her, the makeup artist, since after all, she was the one who had applied the makeup. Not too long after, Iggy had announced that she would be going on her end of an era tour but shocked supporters when she dropped the bomb that she'd be indeed quitting music, but not in the way her fans had assumed. She wanted to readjust her focus to other creative projects and hopes to come back to the musical side of things in the near future. But honestly, who knows? Maybe Iggy wants to pull a Rihanna and forget she ever even had a music career to begin with. Despite the setbacks, backlash, accusations, and overall problematic behavior, Iggy may have fell off to the mainstream world and perhaps may have even been blacklisted once upon a time, but she's still a force to be reckoned with on an international level. Her music videos and YouTube channel continue to cultivate billions of views with no radio play, something a lot of these new rap girls wish they could say. Her many accolades, American Music Awards, Billboard Awards, People's Choice Awards, four Teen Choice Awards, and several Grammy noms speak for themselves. Whether you like her or not, Iggy has surely left an historic mark in the rap game and overall music industry. And by how the industry is being run today, we wouldn't be surprised if we heard Miss Iggy Iggs back on our radios very soon. And it's safe to say that she's achieved her goal of becoming a household name. What do you think aided in Iggy's fall from grace? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments and stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.